was a time when I genuinely believed I was making the wrong decision by actually following my dreams. I believe that doing the thing that I desired to do most was a foolish ambition. There was a moment when I almost gave up entirely. And to be honest with you guys, it was mostly based on other people's perception or opinion of me. And it wasn't necessarily what they were saying straight up to me. It was a lot of the things that they weren't saying. Right. So when I would tell people what I was doing in my life, what I was aspiring towards and, you know, you get the, oh, oh OK. Oh, huh, hmm. what does that mean? Huh? Oh, interesting. How's that going to work? So how are you going to make all these sorts of of um, of responses? And at the time, I was not in a place where my self-belief was where it is now to where I don't give a damn what anybody says. Even you, the person who might have been following me for the last year or whatever, maybe I don't give a damn what you think about me. All I care is what I think about me and I care what you think about you, right? What I think about you doesn't matter. But at that time, I was not at the place that I am now. I was in a place where I still needed external validation in order to make me feel as if I was a somebody, as if I was going somewhere, as if my dream mattered. And so again, I found myself on the brink, almost quitting entirely because I was not getting back that level of reciprocity that I thought I should have been receiving. And it was in those moments that I finally realized the people who can't understand your vision can't understand your vision because it's not theirs, right? It's like every single one of us has been given a different pair of sunglasses, a different hue that nobody else has, and only we can see through that frame of reference, right? Only we can perceive in that color, that texture, whatever it may be. And so we look for other people to understand the thing that only we are seeing, expecting them to get the thing that was given only to us. And when we place that expectations on others, we give them all the power in the world and we strip ourselves of the very core of our own essence, the very core of our own power, right? That's the game we're playing with ourselves. And that, my friends, is a very dangerous game to play. Now, this is where I was then led when I finally came to this epiphany of, oh my goodness, I'm literally taking other people who most of them don't believe in themselves, right? So I'm caring about the opinion of somebody who is too afraid to even venture into their own dream. Somebody who's afraid to even look in that direction. They don't even want to look, let alone pursue it and do it, let alone have people question them about why they're not doing something more realistic, quote unquote, why they're not doing something that's more responsible, quote unquote, why they're still pursuing this, quote unquote, childish ambition or childish desire instead of doing what everybody else is doing, quote unquote, adulting right? These are the people that I'm looking for for their opinion. I'm looking for the approval of people who don't even know themselves. Like they say, we want people to like us that don't even like themselves. How is it? I got lean. How does, like where they do that at? Where? Is the math mathing? Is the calculus calculusing? Is the algebra algebraing? You understand me? I think not. And so I got to a place where I finally had to Accept, wholeheartedly accept this, right? Not just a little dabble. Okay, yeah, I don't care about people's opinions. The subtle art of not giving up, right? Like that's all cute to say, but I had to live this now. And living it meant continuing to pursue my dream in spite of the entire world not understanding my vision yet. Because the world would soon enough understand all of it because they would see it manifest. They would see it out into the world. Now they were putting on them glasses. I was, I was manufacturing my lenses now. Now they were taking off their lenses and putting on my shades and saying, oh, that's what it was, right? And that's what happens when somebody quote unquote blows up, when they become the somebody. Wow, wow, look how amazing. Do you know how many people we looking at like, look how amazing they are now who are called a bum by their own family members, by the people closest to them, right? Chris Tucker, he tells this story better than, than most. Man, when I was coming up, man, my whole family, man, they, they say you ain't going to be nothing. You ain't going to do nothing with your life. You ain't going to be nobody. And man, when I got rush hour, they all came to my house. They say, oh, Chris, oh, Chris. Oh, man, we always knew you were going to make it, Chris. We always knew you were going to make it. Oh, Chris, we done quit all our jobs. We rich, we rich. 
he said, uh uh-uh. uh, mama, y'all ain't rich. I'm rich. Y'all better get y'all jobs back. You know, that was that was what Chris Tucker was on, and that's the type of energy I'm moving in. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, wait a uh because there will come a day, there will come a time, there will come a moment where the very people who overlooked you are gonna regret that moment more than anything. Johnny Depp said, What? What'd he say? What'd he say? Johnny Depp said, uh one day the people who looked at you whatever way, I forget what the beginning is, are going to be the same ones who brag about the day they met you. Think about that. Not even that they knew, the day they met you, they're going to be people who looked at you funny one day like, uh, I don't know, who are one day going to look at you and say, damn, I met that person. So think about that. Think about that psychology. The very same person you're trying to get the affection, the admiration of, the attention of, And the way that you do it is by neglecting the very thing, the core of who you are, the essence of your being, your gifting, your talent, your proclivity, your passion in life. You about to give that up because this person is looking at you sideways like, what are you doing with your life? Who are you? You are a no, you know, we're trying to get whoever's attention, right? Some girl, some guy, whatever it is. Like, I remember me, you know little girlies and stuff like that back in the day before I retired from the game, you know, stepped into the soulmate game. And that's where I'm residing for the rest of my eternity. But yeah, I was, you know, dipping and dabbling and whatever it was. And, you know, I try to impress, you know, I, yeah, I make music. I, oh, I never heard of you. Oh, damn, that stings. I was like, wow, I guess I ain't valid. I guess that I'm a nobody. I guess that what I'm doing don't matter anymore. Right. But all of a sudden, when it hits, oh my goodness, you're so, de- I always knew you were so talented. You're just, people will switch up on you real quick and they will regret the day that they overlooked you. That's the, that realization. And I'm not the type of person who moves around jaded. I'll be honest. It's just, it's too much energy for me. It's not even a moral thing, right? It's like forgiveness. I forgive because I want the forgiveness. I want that off of me. I don't want to carry anybody else's baggage, anybody else's weight, right? That's how I move. And so with this, it's really not a moral issue with me. It is as simple as I'm not going to be jaded. I'm not looking at you to see me pull up in the beam of Benz of Benz. I'm, I really don't care. I really don't care for you to see me in the, oh, look, uh, oh, you thought I was. However, I am well aware that the very same people you are currently seeing as overlooking you, family members included, right? You might be Bob Marley sitting in that little room, strumming away at that guitar, you know, uh, participating in some in some uh, aerial Olympics, smoke Olympics. Right. Filling the entire room with incense. Would you say that while you're playing, strumming away at the guitar, watching three little birds beside your doorstep? And the people around you are thinking, look at this Rastafarian bum. He has nothing going for him. What are you doing with your life, man? And he's in the eye. Everything iry. Everything good. Everything good. Three little birds, you know. (laughs) He was just, he was in his vibe. He was doing him. And he continued. And thank God that he continued. Because we then got the gift that was Bob Marley. We got that gift because he didn't let the individuals standing at the doorstep next to the three little birds stop him from being who he truly was. That's the gift that we get when you don't listen to anybody else's opinion. Because those very same people, the very same ones that you're running from, you're booking it. You are beelining from those. And I can't. Oh, man, you you about to get a job like you about to get two jobs, three jobs just so you can explain yourself to people. Me, bro. It was a moment I said to myself, damn, maybe I done messed up. Maybe what I'm doing ain't, maybe this ain't it. Maybe uh, maybe I'm not called to this. Well, I mean, I, I knew what I desired, but I said, maybe this is foolish. Maybe I'm just supposed to do what everybody else is doing. Maybe I'm supposed to be in whatever round peg square box. And so I went and became a marketer, digital marketer, right? Sounds impressive enough. Show me the title here. I'm a somebody. Am I respect worthy now? Do I matter now? This was the psychology that I went through life with almost completely giving up. Because when I say 
um, almost giving up. I mean that I actually did leave. I stopped doing what I do. There was a time when I was creating content and maybe 22, 23, maybe years old, I was putting out stuff, maybe doing a little comedy here, a little this here, a little that. I was putting out music, but I kept running. I kept running back. I kept running back. I kept running back to the familiar space where people would see me and say, okay, he's making us feel, he's making us feel comfortable. We can understand him now. You know, when he's doing all that other stuff, we don't know. We can't quantify. We can't put him in a box. And this is something, you know, my, my girl continues to remind me of because she lives in this way. Man, their box. You understand? Their box means nothing. Move how you feel to move. Be led by that intelligence of the heart. And it will always guide you in the right direction. And that's the absolute God-given truth. So help me God. The moment that you follow that heart is the moment that you're going to find yourself in alignment. That's the moment you're going to find yourself in a state of truly living. That's the only way. And the same people you are looking at, looking for their approval are going to try to be, they're going to be knocking down the doors to your concert. Man, can we get some VIP tickets? Man, can we get one of your hoodies? One of your, man, can we? Man, oh man, I used to, yeah, I used to run around in, 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 in her circle. I used to run around in his circle. You know, we was, back in the day, we was real cool. We were this, that. And if they can't get access to you no more, maybe they're going to talk about you. And that's okay. Oh man, they want nothing. I'm the reason why they blew up. I'm the reason why, you know, they wouldn't have really done nothing if it wasn't for, they're going to say anything they can, but it's all going to be directed to you. But you have to focus on your own life. You have to give your energy, your time, your attention, your existence to what you are building within your own life. You can't fixate and focus on other people's. Look, I wrote this, my first published book, one of many, right? Powerful, powerful book. Everything I write is gas. Trust me. Doing me guilt free, breaking free from people pleasing and unleashing your personal power. We need to break free from this mentality of people pleasing, looking for external validation, wanting every damn body to say something to us, to be something to us, to think some way of us in order for us to feel good enough. You are more than enough at this moment. You are worthy, deserving of everything that you desire, period. You are made by the infinite. You are made by source. You are made by infinite intelligence. The one who knows all, the all, the end and the beginning, the first and the last. That's who crafted and created you, period. And so everything you desire is already trapped, locked away in you, and you got the key. And only you can turn that mother and let that thing free. You understand me? You got to let yourself live. You got to let yourself breathe for the first time. This is me finally breathing. I said, I, imagine having to keep all of this. Y'all see how off the wall, I'm bouncing off walls. I'm dee, 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 dee. On a daily basis, I'm hyped, I'm high off life, I'm passionate, I'm invigorated. Imagine bottling all of this up and keeping it behind the damn cubicle, keeping it locked up and trapped up. Oh, I, I do like the hoodie, though. I do like to ride my hoodie like these. But imagine me trying to be somebody who I'm not meant to be. Imagine me, look, imagine me. Y'all don't know nothing about that little Kurt Franklin joint. Imagine me trying to be anybody other than who I am. I will be sitting away miserable, sitting away behind the desk. I'll be sitting away, you know, talking to clients that I really don't want to work with, doing things that I really don't want to do because that's exactly what I was doing. Having conversations I really didn't care. Oh, you know, we got to create a strategy of how to create the funnel and I don't care. Look, that might be your greatest passion. Maybe you love digital marketing with your whole soul, or maybe you're doing it because you think you have to in order to make money. I don't know what it is, but the only thing that's going to bring you abundance in this life, the only thing is doing what you're called to do. The thing that is burning inside of you, not on you. If you got something burning on you, you need to go get that check, playboy. But the thing that is burning within you, that thing that is so invigorating, that is so uh, impassioned within you. You need that thing to drive you. That needs to be your motor, your modus operandi, your North Star. You understand me? And everybody else who was doubting, who was clowning, who was looking at you frowning, every single one of them will one day look at you and say, damn, homie, in high school, I was the man, homie. What happened to me? Shout out to 50 Cent. 
You can get your royalty off that joint too. If people go back to that song, you know, I just, I'm really at a place guys where I'm giving my whole self everything and there's no retreat. I burnt the boats behind me. Like there is no this, that, there's no going here. There's no going there. This is it for me. This is it. There is no other option. I'm not giving myself any other route, period. Oh, that sounds terrifying. I can't believe it. That's so risky. Aren't you supposed to mitigate your... What about this one's advice and that one, this one's... I don't give a damn who said what and when they said it because they have nothing to do with who I am and my life experience and neither do they have to do with yours. And that's the God honest truth. You can have people around you giving you all the advice in the world. But what I ask is, what are you doing? That's what I ask. And if they say they're doing all these things and I say, then that's your route. You're doing you then. If you're not doing you, I don't want to hear you. If you are doing you, I want to be inspired by you. But I don't want to hear. I like, I, I'm not here to take your advice for how to make my life work. I can't. I live too long in that space. 26 years I lived in that state of being. 26 years I lived for other people to see me a certain way, to be perceived, to be accepted, to be valued and evaluated. And bruh, I said, enough is enough. I'm going to live my truth. I'm going to be me. I'm going to do me. Oh man, you know, it says that retention rates on you. I don't give a damn about a retention rate. I am going to do whatever invigorates me and whatever is for me will never miss me. Not a day in my life. Man, you know, you you should really be getting um getting a 4K. I don't give a damn about a 4K nothing. Unless you send a 4K to my account, I don't give a damn. Oh, well, you know, he's wearing the hoodies and the tank tops and this, you know, if you just cleaned up the look and you just I don't give a damn about none of that. I'ma do me guilt free. That's what I'm doing. I don't know what you're doing. I don't. I really don't. And frankly, I don't care. Not that I don't care about you. It's just, that's your business. That's your prerogative. You understand? You need to do you to the best of your ability. You need to do you to the absolute umph most, ump ump umph most. You need to do you continuously, absolutely, wholeheartedly, every day, 24 hours a day, even when you sleep, doing you. Doing you guilt-free is what you're doing. This is me planting subliminal seeds for you to make sure you get yourself a copy of one of the greatest books you're going to read until the next one that I release. Y'all probably think I'm crazy. See, I'm cocky. I'm the, Yeah. This is what happens when you start to buy into yourself, when you start to believe in yourself. People will look at you like you're crazy. People look at you and say, this person right here, this dude, this chick right here, they are full of themselves. And you say, you know what? I am filled within myself. I am whole. I am full. I understand who I am. I know who I am. I am created for the highest purpose, which is expression, which is creation, which is the most beautiful gift we could receive. And if I'm going to sit back and wait for people to tell me that I'm good enough, oh, mama, please tell me, daddy, please tell me I'm good enough now. And my look, look what I'm doing. I got me a job as an accountant. Am I good enough? I got me a job as an engineer. I got me a job as a doctor. Am I good enough now? Maybe they say yes, and it feels good for the moment. Ooh, my mama, my dad, yes, I'm finally good enough. I got the approval, yes. And then it wears off because now you're at the job you hate every day, trying to convince yourself because while well, they pay well, you know what pays well? Being yourself. You know what pays the best? Being yourself. Ask Oprah. Ask Tom Brady. Ask anybody who is doing them guilt-free. Ask anybody who is being themselves for real. And you will see a person who is manifesting and attracting all the abundance they could ever want in every shape and form. Am I saying it's bringing you happiness? No, but the fulfillment comes from expressing yourself in the most authentic form, period. And the only way you get to that point is by letting go. Yes, I'm going to plug it again because it's that's why I wrote the book. I wrote it for me to remember. I was at a point in my life, a juncture in my life where I said, you know what? There's only one message that matters right now, and it's to live from a place of personal power as opposed to a place of seeking other people's approval and validation. And once I got that idea instilled and I internalized it, 
regurgitated it and it became a part of me at a cellular level. It has been fireworks ever since. Shout out to Alicia Keys. All I've seen is fireworks. All I've seen is life at the highest. All I've seen is the most abundant life possible. And y'all are seeing my journey from like, this is a beautiful thing about, you know, the digital era is you get to see the journey. So you got, you know, some people got to see me when I had five subs or something like that, 10 subs, 20 subs. Maybe I hid the subscriber count because I was embarrassed back then. But knowing what I know now, I wouldn't give a damn now, but that was then. And now, you know, you see me at maybe a few thousand. Maybe you see me at a few tens of thousands. Maybe you see it a few hundreds of thousands. Maybe you see it at a few million. Maybe you see it at a few tens of million. Whatever you see it at, you got to see the journey. You got to see the lead up. You got to see the build up. You got to see the becoming process. And you got to follow the steps, not of being me. I don't want you to be me ever. I don't want you to be anybody else who's out there. I'm going to tell you that right now. This one's taken. It's not that I care about you, you know, putting on a damn gray hoodie and growing out a beard or whatever the hell you got going on. Nah, it ain't that. I'm just saying, if you become somebody else, you are literally always and forever going to be second place, which is always last place. If you're second place trying to be somebody else, you're in last place. That person who's doing them, being themselves, right? Jordan, Michael Jordan, the GOAT, greatest of all time, my GOAT. You can have a different GOAT. I don't get, you can have a Billy GOAT for all I care. But Jordan is my GOAT for a multitude of reasons. Uh, one of which is I'm biased because he's an Aquarius. And so for me, I say, you know what? If there were a hundred Jordans, which there were more than a hundred, a lot of kids who looked up to him that became NBA players, one who was actually renowned, right? And, you know, may he rest in peace. But Kobe, he said, he, you know, he created his entire game off of Jordan's game and he studied the craft through Jordan and he had every one of Jordan's moves down. And Kobe was himself. He had the mama mentality, but he was still, you know, mostly a Jordan, which is why people forget about him when it comes to the GOAT conversation is because they see mini Jordan. You understand? You have to be you. You can't be a mini or large or anything, anybody else. Billie Eilish came out. I remember that. And everybody was all of a sudden had blue hair and was doing darker music. And I was like, bro, no, nah, she's she's there already. Who are you? Who are you? I don't know who's out there in my space. I don't have a space. I don't have a niche. I don't have a, uh, you know, a, a category. I'm just me. So whatever that means to you, it means to you. Some people say, oh, you sound like a young Tony Gaskins. You know, I appreciate all the compliments, but I'll be honest with you. I don't know about any of these other folk. One time Lil Wayne, they asked him, they say, who are your favorite rapper? He said, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. They say, oh, that's funny. Who's your favorite rapper? He said, Lil Wayne. They said, who do you listen to? He said, Lil Wayne. He said, I'm recording every day, all day. That's all I listen to. I'm listening back to my records. I'm listening to my records. I'm building my own life is basically what he's saying. So when you're focused on your own, you can't even really make space. Like, I don't know whose content is out there. I'm I'm creating my own content. I got daily content, you understand, on multiple platforms. And I'm writing books. I'm doing a multitude of things, creating music. I'm expressing myself the most absolute as I can. And so that becomes my world. And when you start to focus on your own instead of focus on everybody else's, what they got going on, you will free yourself. You will finally be free. Most of us, all you want to do is take the chains off. All you want to do is be free. How are you going to free yourself? Break free from the need of other people's approval. Because the very same ones you're looking for approval from, and I'm going to put the capstone on it right now. These individuals will one day regret the very moment they overlooked you because now they're over here looking at you. Mic drop.